To write the name for Cu3N2, we first need to realize that we have copper, that's a metal, and then nitrogen, that's a nonmetal. So metal and a nonmetal, that's an ionic compound. We're going to use these rules here. We also should note that copper is a transition metal, so we're going to have to deal with that when we write the name. First, we'll write the name of the metal. That's Cu, which is just copper. Next, we'll write the name for the nonmetal. That's nitrogen, lowercase n, and we're going to replace the ending with IDE. So right now we have copper nitride is the name for Cu3N2. But remember we said copper is a transition metal. So we don't know the charge on copper. We have to look at what it's bonded to to figure out the charge on each one of these three copper atoms. Nitrogen always forms three minus ions when it forms these ionic bonds. We have two nitrogen atoms, each one is three minus. Total is six minus for the charge on this nitrogen here, these two nitrogens. Copper, we have to have a six plus for these two to balance out, give us a net charge of zero. So we have to have three times some number, give us six plus. Three times two plus, that's six plus. These cancel out, net charge is zero. So the way we show the charge on the copper here is we write a Roman numeral two in parentheses. So each of these three copper atoms here has a charge of two plus. If you're given the name and you have to write the formula, you know that copper has a two plus charge because of the copper two. Then you need to balance the charge out since each nitrogen will have a three minus ionic charge. This is Dr. B with the name for Cu3N2, copper two nitride. Thanks for watching.